So the main components are the IC, the MOSFETs, inductor, filter and capacitor, Q1042, Q1043, Q1043, and this is Q1042. Hi again. I'm going to show you the CPU power circuit component in a real motherboard. Okay, so as you can see, basically, this is the CPU circuit diagram that we have seen in previous lectures. So here we have the IC, so here we have the first channel, as you can see, and over here we have the second channel. So the purpose of all these circuits is to get plus VCC code, the CPU working voltage. Okay, so as I told you before, the main component in every CPU circuit are so the IC, the MOSFETs, you will find in every channel MOSFETs, two MOSFETs, three, four or, or more, then the inductor in order to increase the current, and we will find, of course, some capacitors. So here for this circuit, we don't have here a clear capacitors, but for other circuit, you can find two or more capacitors. But if we go here, for example, here we have another circuit for another laptop as you can see so here this is the cpu circuit as you can see where we have the ic as you can see and over here we have mosfets four mosfets for each channel and over here we have as you can see capacitors do you see here we have an electrolytic capacitor so inductor capacitor okay and we have here also a protection diode so the main components are the IC, the MOSFETs, inductor, filter and capacitor. So let's see these components in a real motherboard. So here as you can see the CPU controller IC has as a reference U1018. So let's see in the motherboard. In the back of the CPU as you can see we have U1018. 18 as you can see so this is the cpu control ic okay then we have here three mosfets as you can see so we have q1042 q1043 as you can see here we have q1043 and this is q1042 and here as you can see we have q1044 this is basically q1044 mosfets so these two MOSFETs are these MOSFETs. And here as you can see we have four cell capacitors. This is basically the input of the circuit where we have the plus V bat as you can see. These four capacitors has as a purpose to remove the noise for the circuit. So here we have C1177 as you can see the first cell capacitor. As you can see here C1177 this capacitor. Then we have C1176, as you can see, C1176, this one also, and we have other two semi capacitors, C1192 and 91, as you can see, C1191 and C1192, okay, next to the CPU circuit. So four semi capacitors, we have four semi capacitors to remove the noise, and we have three MOSFETs. And here also we have three MOSFETs. Then, as you can see, we have inductor L19. So basically, we have inductor in the, in the other side, as you can see. We have here L19, as you can see. So N19, L19. Okay. For the second inductor, as you can see, we have L13. This is basically L13, as you can see. And for the second channel, as you can see, we have Q1039. This is basically Q1039 MOSFET. Then we have Q1041 and Q1040. So here we have Q1040. And this one is Q1041. Okay, so this is all about the circuit, the CPU circuit. So here we have the CPU. This is the CPU IC. Here we have three MOSFETs for the first channel, and here we have four cell capacitor. Okay, for this channel, basically, these four cell capacitors are just cell capacitors. Okay, and over here we have other three MOSFETs. 
with four sternum capacitors for the first child. So three MOSFETs and four sternum capacitors. So usually the failed components in the CPU circuit could be the IC, okay, so this IC or MOSFETs or this serum capacitors. Basically, the CPU can contain more than two channels. It can contain two channels, three channels, four channels, or more, okay? Because the CPU basically requires a stable and precise power in order to work properly. That's why we have many channels for the CPU. For the CPU, basically, we call this channel the main channel, and the second one is the slave channel, okay? So in every channel, you will find MOSFETs. The MOSFETs can be two MOSFETs, three or four. Here we have three MOSFETs, as you can see. Here, the two MOSFETs are connected to the ground over here. The same for the second channel. We have three MOSFETs. And then we have here a protection diode as you can see we have d1023 this is for protection okay and we have inductor as you can see and here we will get plus vcc core the working voltage for the cpu basically plus vcc core is usually between 0.8 or 7 volt to 1.2 volt depending in the type of the cpu here also in the second channel we have three MOSFETs, we have a diode for protection, we have here as you can see inductor to increase the current and of course we have other components for protection and here we will get VCC core. As you can see the VCC core power rail for this channel is connected to the second channel as you can see. So over here, as you can see, we have the IC. The IC, basically, this is a very big IC where we have, as you can see, the VCC over here. We have the VDD. Here we have the clock signal, the power good signal. And over here, we have the ID signals. We have here seven IDs. As you can see here, we have V voltage ID. Voltage ID 1 till voltage ID 6. So basically these IDs or the signals has as a purpose to determine the appropriate voltage for the CPU. Okay? So for every CPU it has its specific IDs. So based on these IDs, the IC can now do exact VCC core that should be generated. Okay? That's why we have these IDs. And of course, in the motherboard, you can find near to this IC, this point. This is basically test point. As you can see, we have here TP means test point, where you can check this ID. So let me show you in the motherboard this test point. Basically, we have forehand and trail. We have seven test points. So let's see in the motherboard. So as you can see, this is basically the CPU. Here we have the back of the CPU. And here, this is the control IC for the CPU, okay? If you focus here, we have max, okay? Maximum 8770. The same reference as we have seen in the schematic. So, and over here, we have the test point. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so here, as you can see, all these lines are for IDs, okay? Based on these IDs, this IC can know the specific or the exact voltage for the CPU. So this is basically the input voltage for every circuit in the motherboard, including the CPU circuit. So, so we have plus VBAT will be applied or pass through this ceramic capacitors. We have here four ceramic capacitors. As you can see, we have C1177, C1176, and so on. So all these ceramic capacitors has the same capacity and the same voltage. 
Okay, so we have 0 0.01 microfarad and the maximum voltage for the server capacitors are 50 volts. Okay, so the 19 volt will pass through the server capacitors in order to be filtered and then through this MOSFET and then we will get here the VCC core of course after receiving here as you can see the control signal from this IC. This IC controls this MOSFETs, all these MOSFETs. Okay. And then of course here we have inductors as you can see L19 and L13 in order to increase the current. Okay.